A man who knows a little something about egregious calls in pivotal moments. Super Bowl winning head coach, Sean Payton's here up with us. That's right, Fox NFL analyst, Taysom Hill super fan, Super Bowl champion, and bougie Gazer Ranch resident, Coach Sean Payton. Everyone, Gazer is closed for business. Yeah, they they uh, they're in the off season now. Yeah, so, so you found your way to slumming it up in L.A. Southern California. Are you enjoying it? Um, we're two days in. We we literally just moved here. The boxes are still packed. Um, I got three suitcases unpacked during the game last night. Okay. I felt that was pretty good. That's the story. Were you throwing those suitcases at the television? Because um, I sure was. Here's the deal. Number one, it was a good game. Um, who do you root for? I don't know. When you're not, when you have, the one thing I've found is when you're not vested necessarily in either team and it's not like an NFC game. When, when you're coaching or we're playing, I'm sure every game matters in a certain way. Like you want the Rams to beat Dallas because Dallas record stronger in the NFC, that kind of thing. Isn't it freeing to just watch it, it an AFC West is. battle? I'm completely just watching like a normal fan and and frustrated the same way. I mean, and I mentioned to you this morning, um, the roughing the passer call. Like I never go on Twitter. Here's the other thing that's freeing. Like I I saw that tweet. If I go on Twitter as a coach and tweet that, like yeah. I'm getting a call and I'm being fine this morning. Is but, that right? Oh, absolutely. Let it rip. Fox, I'm sure, loves everything about it. But of course, what he's talking about, if we can take a look here, is Chris Jones, number 95 out there. He takes the ball, Sean. Well, he a, ends up a, with the it's ball. It's a turnover. It's a turnover. And but I, I I can explain how this foul was called. Okay. So a few years back on the competition committee, one of the rules that we put in was full body weight on the quarterback. And I'm sure that's what the officials saw there from his angle. Yeah, where would he supposed to go? Well, but the, the mistake in the officiating there was full body weight. When we looked for both hands coming off the ground, a lot of times it's a Superman technique. So if I was tackling somebody and then I lifted both of my All hands. All right, let's move the table and All let's. All right, no. <laughs> but, but what you had there that was different than that was you actually had a, a, a strip sack and you had a fumble recovery. You had a great play by the defender. Um, understanding what the official was seeing from his angle. So that leaves us to this spot of, man, are we over officiating certain things? And, um, should, and is. Should that I, be... Well, I think number one, that's that's easily corrected with replay and I think that's the number one frustration when fans have great angles better angles than officials that becomes frustrating does that make sense because yeah. the individual that called that foul was was flipped on the other side but we kept seeing the perfect angle um, so yeah they'll get that right what does that mean they'll get that right they it should be reviewable is what you're saying right when the masses cry out there's change and, and what I mean is the league is very in tune to and their finger right. is in the wind. And we saw it a few weeks ago with Tua's injury. And I think we got a little kickback yesterday or the day before yesterday, Brady's sack in the Atlanta game. It was a well, let's take a look at that Grady Jarrett sack because it's a thing, right? And they're overcorrecting as we're seeing. We saw it on Sunday. I think it's I think it's pretty normal. I think we're always think working. We we're always working to. Um, to not let that happen, but this is this is just a good football play. It's a normal sack, but this comes. Yeah, I mean, the, there's everything about this play is is. Everyone's saying plus. it's because it's Brady. Yeah, I don't think it was because it's Brady. I think it's it fell. I think it falls a week after Tua's injury, which was kind of the whip throwdown. Uh, I, I would say that had more to do with that flag than Tom Brady. Um, it's difficult, especially when, like last night, Kansas City won. Right. So it, it kind of is on the back burner because they won. It, but it would have been a lot hotter of a topic today had they lost that game. It's a hot topic when you're saying, you were on this competition committee. or the, the Three years. Right. None of us have been. What happens behind closed doors? What is the process in actually getting something changed when en masse everybody's saying it needs to yeah, be? Yeah, I, I think. Um, at the end of the season, their questionnaires filled out. Each club, you know, basically 
files an opinion with the league. We take those, that data, we put it together. Um, obviously, it has to be voted by the member clubs. So if there's 32, there's a number, 27 or 28 votes, gets us to a rule change. Um, and then there's a lot of behind the scenes politicking for certain things that you're looking for. I, I think the one thing that we're going to see hopefully in our lifetime. I, I, number one, I think the officials are, are, are working their tails off and, and they do a really good job. But I would say as a coach, if I feel like my team has been inconsistent, if I feel like we're not getting the results that I'm looking for, mm -hmm. then I would reduce the variables. In other words, I think we've added more to their plate in the last 10 years than in any other time in, in sport, football, hockey, basketball. But we've added player safety fouls. We've added helmet to helmet, which is very hard to see. We've added so many different things to their plate that ultimately um, it's, it's harder for 17 crews to consistently call the game. There's three penalties that I think are, are basically the most frustrating for the fan. And, and right now it's roughing the passer, it's defensive pass interference, or it's holding. Right. And all the other things, you know, we can work through, but those are the three fouls that, that make up 90% of our issues. Um, we have to find ways to reduce their variables. And then the other thing that I think is gonna happen, and this, look, there are those that'll disagree with me. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think most of the football fan base, the NFL fan base, realizes that that the NFL officials are not full time, and and I think that's um, bizarre. I think it's nuts. I, it's it's the by far the largest sports um, and most successful s sporting event game that we see right mm -hmm. now on TV. But in hockey and basketball and baseball, they're all full time officials. And then you'd say, well, what are they going to do during the week? Well, when I have a player or a coach in their preparations during the week, and if we added up the hours prior to the game, I want to see at least a similar amount of hours from the officials, and we're not getting that. Like today is, a, what, Tuesday. Right. We had like, Monday uh, Night Football. Is yeah. it Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, somewhere. And I think that... Um, You'd have them work year-round like you do on watching tape, on uh, getting better, sharper. Uh, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. I don't want to lose so many of the great officials that have careers right now. And so w what I would suggest is that's something we grandfather in over the next 12 years, in the next 10 years, in that we hmm. know 10 years from now they're all going to be. And you know what? That, that's going to require paying them a lot of money. And we can do that. Um, so then we can ask more from them. And it can become a career yeah. rather than, well, I do this as well. I don't, I don't think our fans realize that. I think our fans see them as that's, that's their full-time job. And many of these are their teachers, their firemen, their lawyers, their accountants. They, they, they have all, all sorts of different jobs. There's so much during the week they can be doing in preparation yeah. for a game. And, and, and that's with film study, with team study. Um, they can be at various practice. I mean, there's, there's a slew of things that we could, we could help improve. You're right, though, because you're put, you're putting player safety and wellness on them, which is something they didn't really they've weren't never had with that. before. They've never had that. <clears throat> and so when you see a bang bang play, and then uh, am I calling that defenseless? Am I calling it helmet to helmet? Right. Those are hard to call. They're much easier to find on Tuesday or Wednesday. They're much easier to to handle. You know, a lot of times we'll say, well, let's make that something. We'll address after the fact because it's too hard to officiate. I, I think we've increased the variables and I think we've gotten more inconsistent because of it. You really, uh, I gotta tell you, you're very woo like you're very removed from right now, not removed, but the visor and- I'm the, not pissed you know, off right now. Like. <laughs> but, but seriously, like you're, you are uh, taking up a very uh, pragmatic, reasonable view 
of what referees are going through, but it's not how coaches, I'm sure, see it in game. You've been, I mean, you literally yeah. have been on the bad side Look, it, of the, everyone saying this was the worst call they've ever seen. Second. I, I submit PI. I mean, I'm sure we have it back second. there in the control room with Nicole Roby Coleman. I mean, and I'm gonna tell you this how that was a worse call than last night, this, right? This was this was a difficult difficult call. This call. Yeah. All right, and and I'm gonna step away because. We have to ask. Now the blood pressure's going up. This is a shot I need. No, what, we have to ask the question why these things happen. And I believe in my heart of heart, this is, I'm against the all star crew for the playoffs. Sean, you won't even look at it. Sean right. will barely look at the I can't, play. I can't. I'm going to look at camera one. You literally she told me won't look at the play. I'm going to look right into camera one and say this, this call happened because of all star crews. And a young official who sees it, grabs his flag, he acquiesces to the veteran official who's got an awful angle. And the young official who's worked with this official for the first time in his life in this game then puts the flag back. And that's why I dislike all-star yeah. crews. I want the same crew. I, want, I, don't, I don't want crews. Like, if you and I play golf together every Friday, I'd we'll, kick we'll, your ass. we'll that's talk shit, sure. right? Yeah. We'll talk smack. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, can I say that? I don't know. Whatever. All right, whatever. But, <laughs> but if we only played golf one time, we would tend to be, like, friendly and, like, right. And, and that's human nature. So when you when that stuff happens, and you've got, I mean, we were you were talking this morning about the Titans game, right, where there was a roughing call Ugh. last year with the Saints. It cost us a playoff. I bro. think we have that one too. We're just really trying to. Are poke you going to put that on? Maybe we will. Uh, but when stuff like that happens, how do you move on with the crew the next couple Sundays? You see them, and you're like, Hey, Jim, how's the family? Yeah. How's the accounting firm? This. How is, do you move on? How do you finesse that? This is. Um, <laughs> this look this. This cost us a playoff. This is a turnover against Tennessee. It's an interception in the back of the end zone. And it was one of the worst roughing the passer calls ever. And the, and the umpire, I know, uh, does a good job. He, he just, like, this is a love this. tap. I have to see that again, Kusha. <laughs> okay. Please. <laughs> Gonna, how, do you, how do you fix roughing the passer? Very specific, like, in one sentence, how would you fix it? I think we've gone way too far to the right with this, uh, and, and, I, and I think it's um, if it's if it's a personal foul roughing the passer, we can get that video and click back and confirm it in mm -hmm. five seconds. If you want to include video replay, if not, I hate the term. We're going to err on the side of caution. I don't want a frickin' error. There's a quote for you. I don't want to frickin' air, Sean Payton. I mean, error. it's true. Yeah, I error. I, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to make a mistake. So yeah. we're not going to error to begin with. We're going to see. I think we can see intent. Um, and I know we're going to stay off the knees. We're going to stay off the legs, and we're not going to burp the quarterback with a fall down, lift our arms up, mm -hmm. and we're not going to hit him late. But I don't like the, the I don't like the hands that are getting called late to their you know shoulder pad or the, right. the that's never been a source or a cause of injury. So I, I just think we've we've over officiated that. Got to take there away go. some of the variables, simplify Reduce it for the them, variables. and make them full time because we can pay them and we can afford to do so. Yeah, hundred percent. It's well said by you. You know what else happened last night that really uh, <laughs> grinded my gears, as one would say. What? Uh, what? These these two point situations, they're mind boggling. I'm not a coach, you are. So let's go through it. Last night you had the Raiders, right? They go for two to try to take the lead with four and a half minutes to go. It ended up being the difference in the game. I'm super confused about the aggressive nature of what's going on and the sort of All overthinking right. that seems I'm to be going you. on. Let's start with, was that the right call for the Raiders there with four and a half to go? Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. Let me ask this question though. I'm watching the game and, and I love Troy and, and Joe. Um, those guys do a great job. And there's three times in the game where Troy says, analytics say this is a go. Mm. So, all, and this is a simple question, whose analytics says that? Yeah, you have like a, you have your whole team. Yeah, but, but coach, according right? to who? Like a like, PFF probably? Or? Yeah, but, but like I don't trust PFF. Like, no, my point is though, where do we come right. up with this? Like, where is this? Um, that's, it, it's not like, we say this like it's a law firm and a beauty pageant contestant. So De Deloitte and Belfer are, are bringing okay. us the results. Like according to PFF or according to analytics, I'm a little bit more skeptical and like, well, who's analytics? Because analytics to me is not just fourth down or two point plays. 
analytics to me is stuff we do during the draft. But Analy you love analytics. No, there's a part of it I do, but when you just randomly say, analytics says this is the time for, like we had a whole analytics department, but there's no, my analytics didn't say we go for it here. Was that the right move? No. So, I didn't like either one of them. Yeah. I, and I, I didn't like the, yeah, I didn't like either one of them. So with what you're seeing, John Harbaugh last week, and all, you know, we saw Marcus Peters and all of that, what, what is the perfect way to handle those situations? I, I it, imagine you're on the ninth hole at Gazer. It, it varies. You're thinking, what do I do here in every given situation when yeah, it occurs it in the It varies season? based on the game, based on the quarterback you're playing, based on how the game's unfolding and the matchup. It's, baseball is so much easier with a pitcher and a batter. Okay. Two people, we have all the numbers we want and we know that one's a lefty, one's a righty. Um, we, have a, we have a lifetime batting average against. We have all those things. Uh, one of the more challenging things in football is it, it encompasses 11 on 11. Um, I remember getting this question once, you know, why didn't you consider going for it there? And, and I said, were you watching the matchup of my rookie left tackle versus Robert Quinn? Right. And the person, the analytic person said, well, no, I said, well, you weren't paying attention to that matchup. That had a lot to do with me choosing not to go for it. And so I'm not looking at the two-point call sheet sometimes until the fourth quarter. Other times I might oh. look at it earlier. Um, so, Well, it's getting overly aggressive, especially when facing these star quarterbacks too, right? Like yeah, Mahomes and, look, and Allen. We'd love to play those teams then. Huh. That's all set. We'll play you. Hey, uh, you're not going anywhere. You are staying put. We've got coffee in your Bob Ross mug over here. I like it. Thank Coach you. Coach Sean Payton, uh, can I see your cell phone, please? Cause I'd like to see if David Tepper has called you in the last 24 hours. We'll get to that. I left this. it in my briefcase. Oh, Seriously, Kate, that. you just Bring threw that out there. Bring on the lie detector test. Thank uh, you. Come here. I'll put my hand down right <laughs> okay, now. Son. Back with the best NFL analyst in the business. Are you enjoying it? I am. Yeah. What is it? What is your favorite part? Um, I would say when we finish the pregame, first off, the people, it's, it's, and I've known a lot of these guys and girls, um, because I've only been in the NFC my whole, like 25 years as a coach. Shout out to Fox. Yeah. And so that I've been in the NFC and I, I love the time when we've finished the show and the games are on and we're in this giant green room and we're just watching the games and, but there's eight of them on, you know, and then there's gonna be a halftime segment, then there's gonna be a post game segment, but it really is the part that fills mm. being away from a team. Because when you leave coaching, which I did, then it's like crickets, it's quiet. Like you, you might go golf, you have your family, <clears throat> your spouse, but it's, there's that void of that the club or whatever and so when we're watching those games you know you kind of get that yeah you did you leave coaching well I did and okay. you just like, asked me how I like being an analyst yeah so no, well, it leads me to this. all right let's get to the it segment. leads me well because you're beating around the bush let's well, go. the Panthers we'll start there I don't yeah. want to talk with the Panthers I don't particularly find that they can see super interesting you can tell me otherwise I know it's no I was asked I heard about what you this. told Colin I get it I, I just I'm, I'm my point yesterday it was real real simple is when these jobs open up, generally speaking, they're broken. And so there's yeah. no utopia. And, and um, rarely does one open up, because Colin made the point, well, they don't have a quarterback. Well, most of the time they don't. Like, what happened in Green Bay is unusual. Or what happened, I mean, so all of them have things that need to be addressed and fixed, yeah. what have you. The I'm thing that's interested. different is that, when does it ever open up in week five, though, in our business? Weird. Yeah, it's different. Did you know it was going to open up? No, I had five? no clue. You had no idea, huh? No, no. I mean, I'm like you. Okay. Um, but well, that's you're unusual. Not, well, you're me minus no. 20 years of coaching experience. No, 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 no. And, that was unusual, I think. Uh, okay, so this happens. What's not what's not unusual, but what's fascinating to me is we were, I was on the air yesterday. That happens. Everyone says Wilkes, whatever, but your name is trending. 
your name, when something's going wrong with a play call in Dallas, your name starts trending on My Twitter. name was I'm trending just, because it was announced that I was going to be on your show that's right, with that's FanDuel right. up in Adams true. in the morning. Are you, try, are you trying to be, like, be humble for some reason? What no. Is, like, where, what happened to my friend Sean Payton is my question. <laughs> uh, but be, be honest here. What does it feel like? Just I'm asking you as a friend, what does it feel like to be the bell of the ball when it comes to coaching? Um, I don't know. I, I think there's, there's, it's uncomfortable because I know so many of these guys. Like I'm, I'm a friend with Mike McCarthy. Um, I know Matt Rule. He's, I've spoken to his team when he was at Baylor. Um, I know these guys. So, yeah, I, th I think that's one of the um, difficult parts about it. Um, and I really do enjoy the role I'm in now. Like, yeah. a lot. I can tell you like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that there's a part of you that recognizes, man, if I do this, I'm going to live like 10 years longer mm -hmm. than if I do that. You know, and there's that inner battle that you have with getting back and, and there's an excitement that you have that's different. You know, because when, when you have a good Sunday, for instance, let's say you pick a game to win, you make some comments on air and they kind of come to fruition and you feel like, man, I kind of hit it out of the park today. And then you go home and watch the night game. When you prep all week and you win a game, it, it, there's nothing like it. Like that, that is like a drug. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, it's, it's that addiction to that feeling of winning. I mean, we've seen it with some coaches, right? Like Bill Cower. Like, do you see, uh, who, do you look at any other coach and sort of see how they've handled their? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, look, Parcells has been a great mm -hmm. mentor for me. And, and, but I really just pay attention to how I'm feeling. I really enjoy the, the job I have now. Um, and to answer your question, Look, it's flattering, uh, and it's a lot better than hearing comments like, well, the last guy we'd want is. Right. You know? Right. And so, yeah. Well, you've earned it. You're on the top of everybody's list. Yeah. So um, what were you doing when David Tepper called you? Um, I, when he called me? Mm-hmm. I was unpacking, of course, and then I told him, I said, hey, we can't talk now. We'll break a rule. So what did he just? What did you guys catch up on? David Tepper didn't call me. You're I, lying. I, I, he didn't. And did, I, he did can't David and he Tepper? Didn't. No, he did, did not. Did someone he, contact you about no, your interest in a potential? No. All right. No, dead happening? serious. I'm being honest. Uh, you are. Yes. We actually 100 percent. They can't do that. He's got a shot collar, lie detector test attached to him. Places unknown. I don't want to talk about it, but they, he, it would have buzzed if he was lying. They, they can't do that. Yeah, um, I know. I know. You're not allowed to. No, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, so talk to me about coaching destination attractiveness. What are three things? that you, you're the bell of the ball, you just are. Just accept it. You're so humble, it's strange to me. Uh, what, are, what are you looking at? Prioritize what you're looking at when it comes to what might be interesting to you down the line. I, I, when I use the term functionality, you know, and, and it, it's, it's ownership front office, you, you just want everyone's oars to be in the same rhythm, sequence. And I think one of the challenges in our league with a, with a number of teams is that's not the case. And so despite whatever talent's there, despite the talent of the GM mm -hmm. or the head coach, if, if it's not strong through the middle, then they have no chance of, of winning the ultimate prize. So quarterback isn't your number one priority? No, that is. But, but if you're waiting for the job that already has that in place, then that, so, the minute you get to a place like New Orleans in 06, we got to solve that problem. Right. And so we're looking at all our options. We're looking at the draft, um, the 06 draft, Leinart, Vince Young, Jay Cutler. We're looking at free agents that might you know, be able to hold the fort for a year or two. And then Breeze is released with an injury. We, um, we like the risk with the makeup of the player. And so that has to be addressed, yes. but. But what I'm talking about is beyond that. What I'm talking about is the ownership group, the front office group, is that all in concert? Because in some places it's not. And when it's not, I don't care who the quarterback is. Like in other words, then you don't have a good job. 
Right. You, you know what I mean? Then, then despite how, how good your game plan is, despite the talent you bring into the building, if, if those things aren't all on the same page, mm -hmm. then you have dysfunction, and then you have, you know, a, an average to below average. Coach, is it safe to say then that you had a good job in New Orleans? Absolutely. So, and I would say a great job, great ownership. I miss Mrs. B. She's the best, right? My best friend's the general manager, Mickey Loomis. Like, and I miss him. That's the one thing that's undervalued for me was, all right, I'm stepping away. But, man, I miss those people because I enjoy being around them. Dennis Lausha and that, that, that ownership group, the people in the building. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm spoiled, but I know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what that looks like. And if you looked at our drafts, you know, everyone's on the same page as to what we're looking for. Makeup, football IQ, I could go on and on with the things that are important. And then all of these things then, along with the right decisions, and then pretty soon you win a lot of games, pretty soon you win a bunch of games. Where are you going with this, Kay? I'm going, well, because, I, I mean. It's a it, great spot. It's a great spot. So is there, a, you don't have to answer this, but my head is, is there a better spot? Is there a better spot than where you had? I know Dennis Allen's doing his thing. I know that you are a champion yeah, of his. Yeah, I, I don't know that, so though, because I don't know the other spots as well. Like, I know the Saints intimately. I'm saying, but you were happy there. So I'm just, I think Saints fans would be very curious by the comments that you're making is all is I'm saying. Is that the reason for the helmet up there? You I know mean, I love the Saints. Like, That's why you are our buddies, like, because of the Saints. But I have Saints. a feeling that, like, that little segment of your shelf can rotate. Yeah. Like if Cooper Cup's in here, you have a Rams Are you there. saying you're coaching the Rams next year? Is that breaking news? No, like, what but are we I'm saying, saying is that <laughs> the one, pe like Dolly Parton, I feel like stays, she, you can't she's move here Dolly. forever. Do Dolly but I feel like the helmet cemented. comes and goes. The helmet can come and go. Well, I, I would ask you, if you're, you're telling me that helmet can come and go, you're open to all options. It's, are, are the Saints among those options potentially down I, I the don't line? see a Fox helmet. I. I Love my job with Fox oh right now. Oh my gosh, you're so. But, I know you do, but we all know you're going to go win a Super Bowl. We're not dumb, Sean. Like, you're right. going to go win a Super Bowl. You want to talk a little? I don't know where. Let's talk about some teams that you like. Let's talk a little football here. I think Mark Ingram is popping by the show, by the way. Nobody in the control room tell Mark Ingram that we have Sean Payton here because you've got to talk to him about some things. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Um, no, I know. I want to ask. I, saw, I heard you on Colin talk about Jimmy G. I am a fervent supporter. I'm a defender of him. He gets it from all angles. He gets oh, it from fans. Homie. We're Nobody all homies. gets it. Right. Oh, Illinois. No, we're all Chicago, Illinois. I know, but he went to the same school as you, right? Yeah, but he's from Chicago, too. Yeah, great. I yeah. mean, you're barely from Chicago. I'm a suburb. Oh, okay. So listen. So you're like 10 minutes ask, closer to the I city ask, than I was. I want to ask about Jimmy Garoppolo because I want, where does the disrespect come from? It's, uh, I mean, honestly, coaching, ownership, fans, analysts all over the place, but he's a winner, so I don't quite get it. Um, I don't either, really. It's a good question. Uh, look, he, he's led his team to a Super Bowl. He's led his team to an NFC championship game. He's been injury prone. I get it. Um, I think we all are guilty of this. He's traded from New England to San Francisco. And, you know, New England, I think, took him second in the second round. And then we hear that he might be traded again, and then they draft a first-round pick on top of him. We all tend to believe what the coaches and other teams are doing. And, and so it was, I think it was, um, it was easy. Uh, for for the fan to say, well, we got to get better. We can't win it all with Jimmy G. Well, you were this close twice to win right. it all with Jimmy G. So yeah, you can. And you the players can. love him. That's like the only people yeah, that really support him. Yeah, I think so too. Him, I said this at the start of the season on Fox when we were doing our whole like, what is the storyline this year? And I said it's going to be the revolving door quarterback in so many places. Hmm. And and I mean that we've already seen it in six different teams they're playing quarterbacks maybe that didn't start the season because of injury or another reason I think when you invest as much as um, the 49ers did in Trey Lance mm -hmm. and you make that decision to take him and trade up to take him ownership sits around and says hey how's the new guy they, they don't want to hear about how Jimmy's doing got it right they want to hear about the guy we had to have and 
I don't know how Trey Lance was progressing honestly at all in that offense. Um, we can assume yeah, based he, on the he could have been see. he could have been doing fantastic, um, but I know this is a dangerous team in the NFC, and and I think when I watch the games like everyone else, Philly's a dangerous team, San Francisco's a dangerous team. And You're that, just sucking up to Marissa, Sean. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not. Line, I'm not. Yeah. She's excited. Philly, I used Philly's to live in undefeated. Philly. Philly's ex they're an exciting team, and they're a threat. And Dallas is a threat as well. They're playing too good on defense. So those are the three teams that I see that are different than the rest of the NFC. That's me. San Francisco. No For, Packers, no Bucks. No, not right now. I, I, I just see the, the three that I just mentioned ahead of those teams. Two NFC East teams. Unbelievable. We're going to see him true. next weekend play. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on Sunday Night Football. Uh, with, with the Niners, Super Bowl, are you, how dangerous? You're saying they're dangerous. How dangerous? I know you're saying top three. Are they t top of the hill they, of those they, three? They, they can. They that can, defense. Yeah, I, I think um, any, any of those three can end up in the Super Bowl. We're, I mean, we're five weeks in, but I like them a lot. Before we go to break, we have Mark Ingram. When, what, what point in the season, like in 09, what was your record? 13 and 13 and 0, and then we lost. Our first game. At what point in this season do you know your team is sort of special? Week seven, when you win seven in a row or eight. What happens is, what's, what's unusual is you get to like 10 and you're like, where did the weeks go? Like they just start rolling mm -hmm. and time starts flying and then pretty soon it's like you're eating turkey, you haven't lost yet. It's fast. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> that face you just made is the face where I know that as much as you love Fox, and you'll be back at Fox at some point, you're going back to coaching that face. Come you literally on. looked up at the stars and the sky and were just mute. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yes, it's I was so looking great. at your leather it's, helmet back Oh, yeah, there. it's so great. All right. Uh, <laughs> we got to talk to Mark Ingram after this. Also, you mentioned the Cowboys. What would you do if you were Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones in that quarterback Continue situation? Continue doing what I'm. All right. The prompter says, our next guest is one of my favorites. I have one of my favorites next to me, though, so now this is getting awkward because this is a guy who visits with us every week currently in his 12th season in the NFL. Let's welcome insane superstar running back Mark Ingram. My girl Kay, what up? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey. SP, what hey. do you do, dog? I got a list of things I want to talk to you about right here. All right. Hey, Let's get their know, singles. Hey, Let's just hey, get you shoot two. Shoot them to me. Shoot them to me. What's up, SP? I no. miss you, dog. <laughs> Good seeing you. Hey, uh, I'm proud of you, first off, and excited you guys got the win this weekend. It's it's hard watching, I'll be honest with you, but uh, but that was a good win. Hey, man, we're just trying to get it going, man. You just start away. We got the we got the win last week. Got to go again this week. You know what it is. One and zero. One and zero. Now back. listen, I'll say this: you're playing the Bengals, right? And so we're sitting here, and and she just turned red right now because. As much as she likes I'm the Saints, so happy. she rides with who day I do. when it comes between who day and who that. So that's not true. No, Whoa. You, you, no, she. That's not true. She's been to about Can't ten Bengal Can't games. Trust her, man. I'm big trust till I die, right? Mark Ingram, Mark knows. Mark All knows. Right. Sean, stop trying to cause drama here. It, there is drama. But like, how you gonna fool somebody who's blatantly tried to steal the who that? Like who day, who that? How you just gonna rock with that? Like, well, I know they they've had this segment before. Who dat came well before who day. And I'm look, saying. But here's the thing. The greatest sign of flattery is imitation. So we'll, we'll yes, take sir. it. Someone else wants to 100%. do that, that's fine. They're following. Just They're not the first, right? They're right. following us. Right. I mean, even the chant, I'm like, it's just full-blown plagiarism, right? But <laughs> I do see like a Joe Burrow picture in this studio, and I don't see... There's a Saints helmet. The helmet I'm is the one that it. comes and goes. You're She's such got a jerk. 31 I'm other helmets over it. here. No, I don't. Hey, she does. I do not. I'm going. I'm in a rocket. I hey. love. Okay. I love the Mark. Don't, Mark. Mark, don't you even give me any lip. I don't want. I don't even. Hey, don't helmet like just came off. Don't even. Everything else is velcroed down. Like this is temporary. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> now you're in that building, the building that Sean set the culture, and of course you guys are keeping it going with Da. Tell me though, personally, what do you miss about this guy the most? Hey, man, like, just the energy Sean brings, like, you know, the character that he is, um, his smarts, his intelligence, you know, it's just, there's no replacing people like that, you know what I mean? The Obviously, shoe game. The, hey, the shoe game. game. We get the Jordan. shoe cam. Hey, hey, you ain't got the J's on right now, do you? No, he does. Yes, I do. They're, hey, you don't recognize Jesus them because they're down. they're not even, like, available hey, to the... Hey, okay, I take it back. The thing I do miss the most is when he used to tell me to come up to his office, 
and he used to have the extra Jordan shoes, the Jordan golf shoes, a um, couple pieces of gear that he ain't like. And I used to just come back to the locker room with like, you know, two pieces, two, uh, two pairs of shoes. Too. He size yeah. 13, too. Do you yeah, know yeah. his shoe size? Well, no, yeah, but yeah, anyone who's size, size, size 13. Michael, uh, Michael Thomas Michael as Thomas, well. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he used to so it was the 13 the club. Time. It was the 13 yeah. club. What do you do with all those shoes now? It's the 13 club. We take all club. the extras. I need the extra, Sean. I need My all the extra. My son's in the 13 Who club. Else? Ingram's in the 13 club. Mike Thomas is in the 13 club. Um, Jameis Winston <laughs> is in the 13 club. Demario. Michael Jordan is Demario in the. Demario Davis. Demario. We used to have. We'd be up there. We'd have a draft. Like yeah. <laughs> they'd pick a pair, then the next one would pick a pair, and they'd just be laid out on the floor. Yeah. I, Mark, you were you guys were together for so long, Sean. There obviously before you and uh, after you when you did your stint with the Ravens. I think the most impressive thing about this coach is that he keeps players motivated year in, year out, and it's a really hard thing to do. He's wheeling money into that locker room trying to make jokes. He's dancing with the broom after. Uh, why is he so unique, this guy next to me? In I mean, he just way. tries to find ways to get the guys motivated. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's one of the guys, you know? And uh, he just finds ways, unique ways to get everybody motivated, everybody on the same page, you know? That's why you can't replace a guy like Sean. That's why we miss Sean. Obviously, he left a good imprint, a good mm -hmm. culture here that we live in and we carrying on. But, um, you know, it's hard to replace guys like that. You can't replace guys like that. You just can honor them by uh, doing things the right way. My mentor, Bill Parcells, coached his father. Stop. At the New York Giants. And so that's the crazy part about it. Because when I would talk to Bill about Mark, he would talk to me about Mark's father. And they won a championship together. I'm gonna cry. And no, listen, it's a true story. And so this guy, we drafted, you ready? We drafted Cam Jordan, traded back into the first round, and drafted Mark Ingram in the eleven draft, and they're still they're, like they're thicker than thieves. Yeah. Honestly, we had to put their lockers like on the other side because it, it was it got like too much. They were too close. <laughs> so we separate them, but they'd still end up you know. I thought you were going to say Bill Parcells is the guy who taught you how to dance like that. No, Bill couldn't dance. Yeah. Bill Where did you learn those moves, Coach? Just Eastern Illinois, E.L. Cracker. Hit the Sean Payne. Do the Sean Payne. <laughs> do, 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 do the Sean Payne. <laughs> yeah, do the Sean Payne. <laughs> this is so happy. Hey, Sean, are you going to a game this year? Um, it's hard to go to a game if I'm working on Sundays, right? I'm going back for uh, for Halloween. And you're here on Tuesday, so that's so tough. Hey, you've been doing a good job on uh, on Fox, Sean. I've it's been, been pretty out, good, man. right? It, it's been yeah, decent. Yeah, yeah, you, so, you look like a natural up there, man. I would like to go, if you guys play a Monday night game, I think I can do a Monday night game. Can we look at the schedule? Game. We got the Ravens on Monday night. In the dome. 10 20. I'll be Come, there. Coming 10 20. Up. Now you got to hold him to it. Mark, you got. Mark, you might have Wait, to leave him 10? some tickets. It's 10 October. Oh, no, that's, that's a Thursday night game. Yeah. 10 it's October. like in five games. We got the Ravens I'm Monday night. You're going to come do the Who That Chant or what? Listen, I'll do the Who That Chant. 10, 10 is October, though, right? Sean, yes. October 20. All right, yeah. that's all. Yeah. <laughs> My analytics say so. PFF <laughs> told me that it's that. Wait, no. What? We, we got a, uh, we don't got no home game. On, I mean, we don't got a Monday night on 1020, do we? No, I think it's a Thursday night game. Can someone tell me? At Arizona. We play on Sunday Thursday and night. then we go Thursday. Listen, yeah. but that's listen. At Arizona. At Arizona. But, we have, but hear me out. I'll have, be, when you guys play Arizona, whenever you play Arizona, if it's not on a Sunday. Thursday night. You Thursday said, you night. You said Monday night. We have, I know in like, in probably like five games, we got the Ravens on a Monday night in, in New Orleans. I'll be at that one, oh. and then I'll I'll pre-scout Arizona for you. I'll just fly over early with Orny, and I'll have that thing wired. Yeah. All right, and we'll yep. talk more about it then. That's but. November seventh. Right, cool. Everybody yep. keep now. That's you know, Saint Social Media. Get that out there. You need to have what is it? The who dot the who dot chat you're gonna lead. The who dot do Nation. that. Yeah, yourself I mean, a king you have cake to be yourself a, a the whole deal. Now Cam Cam Jordan chooses who leads the who dot champ, oh. but I'm gonna put a little birdie in his ear that yeah, Sean might be in town for know. that game. Cam chooses it unless I'm back, and then I tell Cam. <laughs> touche, touche. My question is, Mark, I liked what I saw out of the offense. You know, don't drag, you know, poor Sean wasting all those private jet miles if that offense isn't going to keep it up. Is this offense what it's going to look like for weeks to come? Hey, that was just the start. You know what I mean? We're going to keep building. We're going to keep building. You know, Taysom had a big day. Alvin had a big day. Um, Al, uh, Andy operated the offense great. We was able to run the ball. We played some good defense. Obviously, a lot of room for improvement. 
They're uh, doing things that'll get you beat. But uh, we got the win, and we're building on it this week. So we're happy with that, and we're going to keep getting better. Hey, you know what the best part was? I love it when I see Pete Carroll spit his gum out because that means it's over. And I saw that the other day, and I was like, man, make him spit that gum out. Like, that was perfect. <laughs> he be chewing that gum. Yep, but then when he spits it out, it's, it's over. It's over. That's like a coaching tell? <laughs> yeah, it's just something. Is there something else that it's, other coaches it have? It varies those? with each coach. Do you have a separate analytics team looking at grinding tape on it, the NFL coaches' maniacal. mannerisms? Mark, are we maniacal? Maniacal. Are we? Are we sounds a present tense to me. I'm just saying I'm not an English professor <laughs> or an English major. No, but, but we think that way. Yeah. This is an intervention, actually. I didn't want to tell you right away, but it's me and Mark coming together to tell you that, you know, you and DA can co-coach it for the rest of the year together. It's an intervention? Yeah, we just, we just, we All miss right. you. We miss you. Are you microdosing my coffee yes, like that I show? Yes, I am. What's I the show? No. <laughs> Ayahuasca? No, talking? there's a new show. Speaking of Aaron Nine Rogers. Perfect Strangers. No. Yeah, Nine Perfect Strangers. Can you believe this? This guy's watching Netflix shows at night now? This is unbelievable Tulu. to me. It's on Hulu. Hey. Crazy. He He's watching Netflix shows. He used to be up here at midnight, 1 a.m. You know what I mean? Microdosing the coffee, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what is your best Sean Payton story off the top of your head? I know you've got a million. Too many. Man, we got great stories, man. We got great stories. Lots of good times. You know, sometimes butting heads. You know what I mean? But uh, I remember one time we butted heads. Arizona. And he called me up in his office. Yeah, yeah. One time he called me up in his office. He was like, man, we can't keep doing this. He's like, but we can fight if you want. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, sure, I'll beat you up, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, hey, we can't, keep, we can't keep button heads like this, but if we have to, we'll fight first. I just throw some right. Jordans his way. Hey, so we played in Arizona once, speaking of Phoenix. And it, this was my mistake because sometimes you get into a game plan and, you're, and we're on our 20 yeah, we got to go 80 yards, and mm -hmm. so we run a play-action pass, and boom, then we hand the ball off to Ingram, gain to 12, good run. Then another run to Ingram, gain of 18, then we throw it again, complete, dump a ball to Ingram. And, and so that drive took us all the way down to, like, the two-yard line, and Mark had a lot to I mean, he had, call it, 50% of those yards to get to the two, and then I go to goal line, you know, and, and we sometimes – to a fault, we would have assigned personnel. So give me goal line mm -hmm. 23, goal line yep. 23. Yep. And I don't know who trotted in. Uh, I can't Tim, remember. High Tower. Uh -huh. High Tower. So High Tower ah, trots in and takes it in the end zone. And man, we score. And then, but I'm not really paying attention to it. And then I see Mark, and I'm like, and I'm, and I'm like, this is when deep down inside, I'm like, damn, we, we, we need to have flexi more flexibility, and that was one of those times where, like, you should have had that touchdown. All right. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good, man. We, but, we squashed that beef. It's all love. But we yeah, – all the time. <laughs> but that was just how we were wired, though, yeah. and it was always – it was always uh, – when, when it was over with, it was over with. It was never yeah. anything. It, it was just – we were just wired that way. Mm. Yeah. Wired different, man. You know what I mean? We alphas. Alpha dogs. Alpha, you know dogs. I mean? I love Alpha Mark, dogs. Mark, there's a lot of uh, internet stuff happening because, you know, they, uh, Matt Rule has been dismissed, parting ways with Carolina. Uh, a lot of people wanting Sean Payton to take that that interdivision coaching She's world. stirring up the shit right what? now. She's stirring <laughs> it up right now. Stop swearing on TV. Up. She's I keep it thinking it's a podcast. Mark, what would you make of that sort of a landing spot for your old coach? He ain't going to Carolina. He can't go to Carolina. Like, that's just not acceptable. Like, <laughs> not the Panthers. Heads Carolina, <laughs> tails California. California! You haven't heard that song. No, but now you're making, you are, are really. Are you in a shell? It's Sean McVay. Everybody, hey, everybody's skeptical, Sean. <laughs> everybody's skeptical. Cage is stirring. Cage is saying what everybody wants to know. I brought you know up I mean? a good TV hey, show. See, Mark's my, Mark's in a song an right now. She doesn't recognize either either one of them. What, you know why? Does Mark? Huh? Yeah, he does. He's with me the what, whole time what here. What song? It's, we'll, we'll oh, it's a Saints it thing. No, it's a it's locker a room song. Saints <laughs> thing. Uh, Mark, what else is going on? You want to give me your your watered down, saying nothing update on Jameis Winston, like I ask you every week, how he's doing? <laughs> hey, he's getting healthy. We got to get my dog healthy. You know what I mean? When you got back and ankle and stuff like that, you you got to get right. So we got my dog getting better. He's getting healthy. 
And uh, I guess that'll be the watered down version for you this week. Yeah, I love that. Taysom Hill, what a hey, stand. Wanna I give him something. a little pump No, no, I got something. Oh, okay. Hey, Please. for you and Kamara, start holding on to the rock, both of you. Oh, you damn Sterling right. Out. Hey, both of you. You have You're me throwing right, pillows at the screen, like, just Today. like this. Tell Kamara, right. too. Right. CVS receipt straight. attached to that one. You ain't, hey, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. I, wow. could, I only know what would Tell happen if, if you was out there. <laughs> wow. Is that how, how would you tell him as his, as his actual It'd coach? just be a look. Really? Show, right. show us the look in that camera. What is the look? Mark, is this the look? <laughs> you mother... <laughs> <laughs> this has been the most fun. I literally don't feel like we're on television. This is insane. I love you. Mark Ingram, we'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, yeah. Sean, you're the best. Hey, Let's appreciate you. Hey, SB, man, keep doing your thing, thing, bro. I'm making her kick me out. I told her I'm staying here. I've already finished my coffee. You think I have a second hey. one here, but Bye, Mark. they're on a one call. All right, back on the Ben Adam Show at Game Changer says, uh, future commissioner Peyton, some good thoughts. Would you wow. like to be the commissioner? Ah, uh, I'd like to pay though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this. Back it up in Adam's show. That was possibly the best. Oh, the my best episode. Sean and Ingram were awesome. And Case during the the DK Metcalf emoji was priceless. We love Man. it. Uh, Peyton, let's talk about Cowboys, Rams, any thoughts here? We have 90 seconds left in the show. They're yours. Um, Cowboys, Rams, I, look, I thought that was a telling game. Um, first off, and I, I feel for Sean McVay, because when you watch him, you see that there's been a lot of change in their offensive line. You, you miss a guy like Whitworth, right? I mean, that's, that's a big deal. And then Robert Woods and, and OBJ, when they were really going last year on their playoff run, you, you felt more weapons and it wasn't just Cooper Cup. And I think Sean and his staff are, are, are working hard to, to kind of write that Does ship. Does Stafford look okay to you? His elbow looks well, a little Well, yeah, I think it's a byproduct of everything else, though. I and mean, Sean said it best. Look, Matt's going to be just fine, but these other areas have to play better. And quite honestly, the defense has to play better. I know, yeah. Right? Oh, great. And then conversely, if you're Dallas with every win, and it, we see it, it's happening, it's happening in Philly, and it's happening in, with every win, you feel more confident, more confident, more confident. You know, they were the underdogs in that game. They certainly looked like they, they had a chip on their they shoulder. They simplified it. We have 30 seconds here. You are McCarthy and Jerry Jones. Cooper Rush starts Sunday night, beats the undefeated Eagles. Yeah. Are you starting Dak the next week? I'm starting Dak whenever he's back. He's he's their starter. It's it's it's, and and I'm super glad we have Cooper, um, but Dak is, is is the starting quarterback. But what I've also learned, though... Hurry up, five seconds. Quickly, four, three, two, one. I've learned the formula a little bit better. I don't know what that means. Bye! Yes, bye. <laughs>